welcome back my name is Rebecca never Becky and today guys I'm gonna be talking about my breast reduction I know it's totally switching gears if you guys are new here I typically talk about makeup um, hair I really get into fashion as well but today I want to get a little more personal so if you guys are enjoying this video as you guys get to know me a little bit better don't forget to click and subscribe below and go ahead and join the never Becky family I'm gonna jump right into this video with you reduction. guys. It is currently 24 hours before my surgery and I just wanna lay down some things that I wish I knew about um, and also I wanna talk about things I wish people did not say to me and things I wish people did tell me before the surgery. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by saying guys, this is something that I've been wanting to do honestly since my breast has been coming in when I was like in my preteens. Like I've been wanting to have have a smaller breast because I knew very young that my breast was too big for me so it wasn't a shock for me that I wanted to go through with this or it, I, I guess I should say I didn't wake up one day wanting this I knew that my breast was too big very early um, most women when you know you know your breasts are too big for your body um, some women they don't mind it but me I definitely mind it because I'm bottom heavy and I'm top heavy so finding clothes was always an issue for me um, when I gained weight this is what really prompted me to really really start getting serious about the breast reduction um, I basically got to a 200 pounds guys I'm not even gonna front I'm gonna be very transparent here I gained 200 pounds it was due to several things it was due to um, birth control poor eating habits like I was still 21 which your girl isn't um, and just not taking care of myself I really think during quarantine was like the plateau of all the weight gain for real um, and then I you know went ahead and took the necessary steps to start losing weight so currently my weight is about 170 so I'm hoping to be a smaller than that by the next time this airs um, I'm gonna be working very hard guys this is like a long journey anybody that's dealt with weight issues you know exactly what I'm talking about you know some days you can have really good days and other days you won't but that's basically what prompted me to start my weight loss journey was trying to get my breast smaller um, I was dealing with a lot of back issues I was dealing with um, tremendous um, shoulder issues um, my shoulders had gotten so bad that they actually started to rotate forward so instead of and I'm pretty sure you guys can see I don't try to mention things or talk about um, you know my breast or anything like that but I will say that if you notice in my videos I hunch a lot like my shoulders are down here or you will just see me lose my posture a lot I technically should be like this but I'm down here and this is honestly how I sit and as you can see from this to this is now you can see there is a posture issue um so again that's what prompted me to lose the weight is because I just thought it would get better but unfortunately genetics will not let me be great um, my family has a history of big breasts and it runs in my family um, it's just something I just had to learn to deal with um, I will say things that I hated hearing um, growing up and being a young woman people tell me that my breasts are fine and it's okay and girl you look good when they don't know that I'm struggling behind closed doors and you know finding bras was an issue you know one thing I will definitely say is that you know when people are encouraging you not to take this surgery um, I kind of have to say for my own experience don't listen to them when people are constantly telling you that what you should do with your body or you should feel great about your body understand that there's two things I at least in my experience I've experienced either they're hating they don't want you to change they don't want you to be better um, or they just sincerely are naive of your problems they are seriously unaware of what you're going through and I'm 
I'm not a petite person, so I don't have like very small shoulders or very broad shoulders, but I have pretty small average shoulders where my breast has just weighed me down. It's just not fun. I have so many back issues. Um, I mean, there's been so many times that I've had to like just pop pills just to get rid of the pain and it still didn't really hurt. And I would just have to resort to, you know, standing against the wall, pressing my back up so I could posture myself better to relieve the pressure. So, so another thing that I want to talk about is comments that people have made to me. And this is just my personal experience. I'm not here to attack anyone or make anyone feel bad. But I just want to share my experience with you guys simply because I know comments can discourage people. Um, one thing I will say, I, I like to use the analogy of pregnancy. When you are, you know, with child, you don't want to hear about someone else having traumatic experiences. It's like, no, 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 that's not going to happen to me. And that's just kind of how I felt personally with um, comments that was made to me. Um, people saying that my breasts were totally fine and looked like I lost weight and your breasts look smaller you know now that you lost a little weight and you shouldn't go through with it or girl you're not that big you're fine let me just express from my experience how irritating annoying that is for anyone to tell you how you should feel about your body it's like shut it down shut it up I did not ask you for your opinion and for me I try not to say anything back to people when they say that but all I am thinking truly is do you even live in my shoes you are not living in my shoes you don't know what I am going through um, so for me I've realized that I could not tell everybody what I was getting ready to do. Um, I knew that very quickly when I kind of confided into my closest friends and their remarks were, girl, you don't need to go through with that. You look fine. I even had family members trying to persuade me not to do it. But the reality was for me was that I matter and this is my body and I'm not, you know, 16 making this decision. I'm 31 years old making this decision and honestly I regret being 31 making this decision. I should have been a lot younger um, in my 20s doing it because it was painful then, you know, looking for clothes, things of that nature. I, I just really could not stand the comments because it was already hard enough on my mental that I'm going to remove a part of myself that I never thought I had to and that I thought was totally normal and people just want to put their thoughts and their negativity on me and I knew you know I, I probably wouldn't have been strong enough in my 20s but in my 30s it's a different ball game don't come to me with that I am not here for that do not talk to me about your feelings about my body so one thing I will just say taking away from my experience keep your procedure your business to yourself if this is something you want to do do not blast it to everyone do not tell everybody because they don't need to know that information and until you're ready to tell it you know so that's just something I experienced and it wasn't fun but moving on the next thing I want to talk about guys is what people did not tell me when I was doing my research all the expenses I would have to go through so before I jump into that I want to show you guys my current size and again as a reminder this is 24 hours before my surgery um, so tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I will be in the building <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and stand up and show you guys this is this cup size that I am I don't know if you guys can see how big your girl is like these are not definitely and my my body's here let me do this my body's really small in comparison to what's going on up here so and and if that still hasn't convinced you I did bring now that will be an old bra this is the bra that I currently wear and it's a double let me not say what I think it is and let me tell you guys what it is it's a 36 double D and I promise you this is a lie because one it's from pink and I spill out of this bra every time I wear it I actually hate this bra hate it um, 
I quickly grew out of that size very quickly um, when I got on birth control. So girls, if you are thinking about getting on birth control, think twice if you're already like heavy chested, it's not worth it. Now I will show you guys everything that they basically made me buy before my surgery and this got costly very fast like i honestly wish people you know elaborated on you know the cost of medication the cost of the you know stuff that you're going to need beforehand so i just want to be informative and let you guys know if you're thinking about this surgery you are going to pay out of pocket for a lot of things that i personally felt like my insurance should have covered or at least bagged it up for me and have me on my way but i will say that these are the bras that i had to purchase and there's this is a black one so it zips in the front because you cannot have anything buckled i so it zips in the front it has to be uh was it razorback bra so it has to go in between the blades of your shoulders it should not be wide in the back so this is what i got from amazon and it came in clearly black and then it also came in purple again the razorback it's so i'm so excited to see what i'm gonna be like in this bra because i got them in a medium and i'm clearly not a medium i also have it in nude and now I did hear once I do leave the hospital, the hospital will provide me surgical bras, perhaps to, I'm not sure. But I want to, you know, let you guys know you will be paying immediately out of pocket for this stuff. Um, I got Hyboclint. Hybo do not come for me. I cannot pronounce all these words. I've never seen this stuff before. But this is basically what I'm using right now to cleanse my breasts for the next three days and i have to do it even the morning of surgery so i have to get up around about five o'clock in the morning and wash myself with this i have to do it tonight as well um and then i had to go ahead and of course get some scarring ointment my little favorite i love this even without scars i just honestly love this as a lotion and everything else so i'm gonna go ahead and jump into the medication portion now um so i'm gonna start with some of the more embarrassing medication um i do not again i do not know how to pronounce half this stuff i can tell you what it's for though um i cannot pronounce these medical terms of these medications and as you can see these are like prescribed medications this is not to be toyed with um the first one is a stool softener i know it's embarrassing but because i am going to be on oxycodone if i need it if i'm saying that right oxycodone um i have oxycodone for my pain which i'm going to definitely try to avoid that i do not like to be drugged up that's not my jazz um but i do have this which is a stool softener and i don't know if you guys can see the words if you guys can see that sorry let's let's see if it focus if i do that um but this is basically a stool softener is what you guys are looking at and you take these capsules as you guys can see inside of the bottle um it is a little capsules in the inside so you take those out and you it dissolves on your tongue you're good your gravy you go on about your day now from what i've understand gapatine i believe i'm saying that right gapatine is my best friend after the surgery um because this is a nerve medication which will basically numb any pain that i might feel hence as to why i won't be needing oxycodone um i will be taking this i probably will be leaning on this very hard I mean, I don't want to get addicted because this is just as, you know, druggy. <laughs> but um, oxycodone is the third medication I had to purchase because if the pain is getting to the point of unbearableness, I will have to lean on that. Something else I had to buy over the counter though, but that was also another stool softener. Guys, I also I also had to purchase um, fiber like uh mucinex not mucinex sorry uh you guys know what i'm trying to say i think you guys get what i'm trying to say um the fiber basically i had to get some fiber to have like as while i'm drinking it like i don't know how constipated i'm about to be and i'm 
pretty plant-based what I eat. Um, I do eat meat, but you know, not not heavy, but I'm very like cautious going into like what is my body gonna turn into. Um, I'm not gonna have solids for the first two weeks, so it's gonna be very interesting to see what's clogged up there. TMI, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, sorry. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. Also, they made me purchase Tylenol, which I don't have in my house. It's in my house I have ibuprofen and things of that nature so I had to get some um, it didn't cost much but all of this stuff together medicational wise bras um, one thing that I found out is that because I won't be able to raise my arms like I'm gonna miss this movement here because I won't be able to do this with deodorant and I love to do that with deodorant. I had to go ahead and get the spray on by Dove and I'm a Dove girl so I Dove body wash, Dove deodorant, Dove deodorant spray. I love Dove. I don't do anything else but Dove. Um, so that is some of the stuff that I had to purchase. So please be aware before this surgery if you're thinking about doing it, if you're in the um, current you know process of getting it done, be aware that you're gonna come out of pocket firsthand. And you know I I literally have notes to tell you like they won't even let me go through with the surgery until I had all this stuff. Like get your ducks in a row because you will be definitely bed written for the rest of the time. You will not be lifting your arms or anything of that nature. And I'm a very cautious person, so I don't intend on doing anything but standing still just like this, like a robot, like don't touch me, don't hug me. I'll lift that up like this. And I won't be doing any lifting as a matter of fact because I can't lift anything that's five pounds. So only thing I will be lifting is my phone to my face, okay? Um, the next thing I wanna move on and tell you guys is what it what was the process for getting a breast reduction now i will tell you guys i'm with kaiser and i'm in um southern california so i didn't have to go through i've heard so many stories so i will put a disclaimer i was prepared to go through chiropractor. chiropractor i've heard people say that you know they had to get all this this list of things that you need before you know they will approve you for surgery i le i luckily had one my doctor's black i love her to death she's the greatest um and when she saw me she immediately told me you know two things one i'll approve you once you lose a little weight so your girl was on a grind to lose weight and the second thing was for me was you know she was like you're gonna get approved immediately i see what you're going through and when a doctor can give you that girl i can't believe you've been dealing with that all your life look it's reassuring that you're not crazy and i felt definitely insane wanting my breasts to be small for so many years but i was like i know this isn't normal and it doesn't fit my body um so once i lost the weight just so you guys may be going through the same thing maybe not but your bmi do needs it does need to be in um, the 20s so my BMI was like I don't know off the Richter scale because I was like 200 pounds um, once I got down to my current weight which is 170 they were like great you're in the 20s let's get you in so I did not have to go through a whole lot of um, like transitioning from all this paperwork like because I'm like my doctor is Kaiser like that's my primary doctor care and where my insurance is Kaiser and again this is because maybe I'm in Southern California but I just love Kaiser because they did not make me go through the hoops and all this other stuff like I just genuinely love that so one thing I will say is that Kaiser is great about just if they see something they note it and they will push you forward so um, I went ahead and you know got my approval I met my surgeon um, I'm really hopeful that you know because I am a black woman I scar you know they were telling me that you know be mindful of keloids and I don't keloid from my understanding and I had some pretty good gashes um, throughout my life and I haven't had any keloids so I'm pretty good about or at least I'm, I should say I'm pretty positive about the fact that I may not have that issue but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys all the things that I have to do prior to surgery um, like there's a list okay guys there this is a list 
of stuff that I have to abide by and it's they're not caring about my feelings about this so I'm gonna go ahead and list some things that I just couldn't believe quite honestly that you know they had they had me they have me doing right now um one I will start off with this bad boy again so one thing I had to learn about this girl was that I had to wash normally and then wash with this and put nothing else on like no lotion no oils you can't put anything on so in the morning i'm going to be very very dry and ashy unfortunately like i get ashy y'all like yeah so um <laughs> i'm gonna be going in real real ashy but you know one thing they already told me everything i wear needs to be either buttoned up or a zipper um i cannot have a full shirt like this on because i won't be able to raise my arms um so that's that and let me just see because again guys i have to read all this to you guys you, you know it's insane how much you go through just to get something done and what you're willing to do so i will talk about testing before um surgery so i had to get my blood count tested i had to get an e ekg um and i also had to get a COVID test let's just start our COVID, okay let's just start with the COVID test um i'm doing this procedure during a pandemic um it's insane honestly i will say it's insane how crazy the pandemic is and the fact that i still wanted to do it you know really let me know like i really don't want to be in this pain anymore if you're willing to risk your life go through in and out of people being in the hospitals and i mean at one point the hospital was really really packed and i was a little concerned having all these people around me because you have no idea what they're there for so i was a little concerned but i went through with my COVID test and i will explain a COVID test briefly to you guys um, they take a, a, a Q-tip, a very long swab Q-tip. They rub it down the back of your throat and then they put it in your nose. When they got to my nose, your girl was ready to fight, okay? Because I just felt like, and again, I had a wonderful, wonderful um, black lady that did my COVID test, which this is not to make it a racial thing, but I felt very comfortable with her is what I'm trying to get at. And then I felt like it was my grandmother putting alcohol on my boo-boo. That's exactly how I felt. Like I immediately liked her, but I also was like, you're being too hard on me. So when she went for the nose swab, I felt like she was in here. I'm not gonna lie. I was full tears welling up. I felt like she put the swab down my throat to see how far it could go because I was just like, why is she still in there? And she is moving that sucker around, okay? She is not just in there and out. She was pushing it as far as she could get it. And of course, your girl Clint came up, you know, negative for the COVID. So I was really happy, but it was a lot, y'all. The COVID test is a lot. If no one's telling y'all the truth about the COVID test, it is not fun and i don't know if there's gentler people out there but all i know is that i was literally welling up in tears wiping my eyes away because i was like why did it hurt so much like i kept like hacking because it, it felt like something was in there it's just a place i feel like no one should be touching but i digress um what else do i want to move on to is how does how do i take these medications to prepare for this surgery i'm reading guys so i'm sorry i'm not making eye contact um but the gapamine i will be taking twice a day um for the next five days after before surgery i will only before surgery i will only be taking one sorry about the pause i had to make sure i was reading that right i'll be taking one before i get to the surgery so sometime tonight um before midnight i will be taking it um and then the other pills i will be taking three times a day around the clock um oxycodone i'm not going to mention that because honestly it says every six hours um but i just feel like i'm gonna try not to even go down that route i rather heal naturally and not be feeling like i'm gonna be strong out on drugs i don't even care if it's over the counter and i or what is it prescribed to me i don't care i want to make sure my life is going to be fine um 
things I have to avoid in this time before surgery. Um, I can't take any ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil, aspirin, anything of that nature I have to avoid, which again, I'm, you know, proud to say I haven't had any energy in I'm proud to say that I haven't had any um, reasons to be taking it, so I'm pretty clear on that. But I will be having to do a lot of sponge baths after my surgery. Um, as far as things that I'm avoiding, now I will go into the things, and they, they gave me a list um, of things that I have to do to take care of myself. Um, and that's like sponge baths. Again, I'm going to mention sponge baths. Um, bras that are um, you know that latches in the front that way I'm not reaching over anything like that um, I will definitely just you know side note I'm definitely nervous so if you guys are wondering like is she nervous is she anxious I'm definitely anxious to get it over with um, I'm nervous because I've never had surgeries I've never broke a bone um, I've never even had a cut deep enough that I needed stitches so or any kind of wound that needed any kind of serious care um, so I'm very very nervous about you know scarring and things of that nature but I'm just at a point to like I'm just gonna take whatever you know that's gonna happen in, in doses because I don't want to have high expectations of something that naturally that you know doctors can't prevent so I'm definitely nervous but I'm ready you know what I mean like I'm ready to get it over with I'm ready for the healing process and you know the holidays are coming up so I definitely want to be fully functioning happy go lucky for the holidays and I want to be able to embrace people and you know with caution brace people and actually be able to feel like I'm holding them versus my breast is holding them because a lot of times you know that air hug that I went to church and you you hunch your your breast back and you give them this yeah I'm tired of those hugs because you know sometimes I really when I see my friends I get really excited and I want to embrace them like yes and I can't because it's like my boobs are in the way I'm so sorry so I'm happy and ready to get this over with um but i just wanted to come on here guys and just give you guys a sneak peek of what's going on with me and you know be a little more transparent with you guys i know i don't talk about myself a lot here um i just was always raised to be a very private person and now that I'm older, I'm realizing the pros and cons about being private and there's just things I want to share about my life and this is an area I want to share because there's so many women out there that's being told you're perfectly fine, you're good, you don't need to go through with it. Please, when I say this, if you know and you're old enough to make that decision for yourself, go, go and do it. Do not listen to what other people have to say about your body. This is your life. You're only gonna live it once. Go be happy, go live your best life the way you want to without any restrictions. And I know for me, um, you know, it, it wasn't fun. You know, having a, a large chest was fun for like this long. I, I kid you not. It was like my 20s, I had fun. But my late 20s, I was like, okay, the fun is becoming very over very fast because this isn't fun for me. I remember just sometimes going out with friends and I, I felt myself hunching um, for multiple reasons. I, you know, I didn't like how my chest set out so far. So a lot of times I would sit purposely hunched. So it wasn't that, you know, I guess noticeable or like in your face. I would overlap clothes so people wouldn't recognize my chest so much. Um, there were just things with my mental that it was wearing on me of how I could dress myself or, you know, not looking pregnant in every t-shirt I wore. It was like, I don't even have a stomach. Like, it was embarrassing at some point and, and not to be comfortable in your own skin as a woman, it's it's honestly terrible and I will encourage any woman out there thinking about it maybe wanting to do it if you're of an age that you can make that sound decision do it and also if you're just truly uncomfortable with your own body do things to make you happy I will definitely say losing weight made me happy um, my breasts went from you know really really big to just like 
now we're just gonna be flat and <laughs> really really big um and for me that's not comfortable and so i want to start doing things that make me happy that makes me comfortable and this is where it's starting for me and i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you guys give me feedback leave me comments even if this encouraged you to do something different in your life just to make you happy that's what i'm here for so you know i hope this gives you guys a little more insight and you get a chance to learn and you guys are going to see my post surgery scars and everything i i, I most likely won't be sharing you know my areola pictures but um, you guys will see the progress that I've made over the time. Um, I'm sure by the time this goes up, I've already had the surgery. Everything's over. I'm most likely in recovery. Um, and I'm just doing, you know, this because I just want to let you guys in my world a little bit more and more as, you know, time goes on. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready for this surgery in a few hours. And I will see you guys in my next video.